What are you doing, man? I'm working out. Can't you see that? I can see that, but why the hell with the camera lens? Bro, this lens weighs a lot. It's the perfect workout tool. <laughs> you need help, man. All jokes aside, yes, this lens is heavy, but it's such a beautiful piece of art. Today I'll be talking about whether or not this lens is really the only one solution that people take it for and if it can actually replace three or even four prime lenses. Sup guys, Khan here. And first I'll give you some context on why I picked this lens up. So there are a few things that I shoot. Lifestyle, car and products. And to be honest, I also shoot architecture, landscape, just whatever I feel like shooting. I love photo and videography with all my heart. But if there's one thing that I really hate, then that's switching lenses. For me personally, switching up lenses is such a hassle. It makes me lose time. And sometimes you even lose special moments that you could have captured if you had some other kind of tools with you. So I was actually looking for a better solution than I already had. So the two lenses that I had in my arsenal were the Canon RF 15 to 35 mm f2.8 L IS and the Canon RF 50 mm f1.2. But the more I progressed as a creator and got a better feeling for what I actually like shooting, I had the feeling that I didn't really need a lens that goes all the way to f1.2 anymore. I mean, the fact that you can stop down all the way to f1.2 is freaking amazing. And the low light capability that you get with such lens is just awesome. Even though the Canon RF 50mm f1.2 was really amazing, I was willing to trade that in to get a more versatile lens like this one. But I'm not gonna lie, I was really scared to make this switch because I was already used to shooting at f1.2 and also the price tag of 3000 euros is pretty hefty. So this wasn't a decision I could make overnight and I really thought several weeks about it. And don't forget to stick until the end of the video because then I'll be sharing on whether or not this lens is worth the price. Okay, so let's go over the pros first. This lens is an absolute joy to work with. The combination of being able to zoom all the way from 28 millimeter to 70 millimeter and the ability to stop it down at f2 all the way through is just unmatched. Let's go over some photos I took with this lens. These portraits, I mean, they're just really beautiful. The bokeh renders insanely good. Let's also check out this one. I mean, the depth that you get out of this lens is just amazing. I mean, if we take a look at these photos, these are a few of my favorite portraits that I've shot with this lens already. The compression that you can get out of it. These are shot at 70 millimeters combined with the F2. I mean, the depth is just beautiful. If we zoom in here, we can see the, the beautiful bokeh balls and the separation between the subject and the background. Okay, so now let's take a look at some street and architecture photos I took with the lens. As we can see, the images are just beautiful. I mean, there's really awesome depth and the bokeh balls that you can see from the lights are just looking so good. This is the raw image. This is the edited image. Here is a super dope photo of a ferris wheel that I also really like. This lens is insanely sharp and the autofocus is really awesome too. And this in combination with the Canon EOS R6 I'm using right now, it's mwah. Before I actually sold the Canon RF 50mm f1.2, I shot some photos to compare them with the Canon RF 28-70 f2 to see if shooting at 70mm at f2 would actually give me the same amount of bokeh as shooting at 50mm at f1.2. To me there is actually no clear distinction that gives away that one photo is shot at f1.2 and the others are shot at f2. And I think this is really amazing. I don't see any vignetting at all on this lens and it handles chromatic aberration really well. So that's it for the photo part. But how well does this lens perform for video? I had no issues whatsoever using this lens for video. The autofocus was really amazing all the time. It kept tracking the eye and if it couldn't find the eye anymore, it would go over to the body. Keep in mind though that these videos are shot on a Canon EOS R6 
and the autofocus on that camera is really amazing. Compared to the Canon EOS R, let's say, it's really a step up. So if you're using that camera, the results may be a bit different. Something else to keep in mind is that this lens actually uses a USM motor. And this means that when the lens is tracking your subject and focusing on it, that it's not completely dead silent. So when you're actually filming a moving subject and you want to record audio at the same time, it may be possible that you can hear the lens in the audio. And something else that people have been talking about in other reviews is that this lens suffered a bit of focus briefing. So that when you were trying to focus on a subject, that lens would go like in and out to actually try to focus on the subject. But I haven't really encountered this issue before myself. So right now it's pretty clear that this lens is really awesome for photo and videography. But there are some cons too. Let's go over those right now. Can you see these two? 80% of my viewers aren't subscribed yet? What? Oh, but there's a solution for this. If you press the red subscribe button right here, you can actually fix this. The first con is a pretty obvious one. Because this lens has a huge amount of glass inside of it, it actually weighs pretty much. 1.4 kilograms or 3 pounds. For some people this might be an issue, but for me personally it's not. There has actually been one time that I felt a bit of a strain in my wrist, but that's when I was outside for several hours to shoot some street photography videos and I was holding my camera inside of my hand like all the time. So, But other than that one time, I never had any issues with it before. Because this lens is pretty heavy though, you gotta keep in mind that you get a tripod or a gorilla pod with a ball head that's able to support the hefty weight that this lens has. In the past I bought a gorilla pod that supported 3 kilograms of weight, so it could actually support the Canon US R6 with the RF28 to 70 f2. But the thing is, this lens is so front heavy that it actually isn't able to, to hold the lens and the ball head is a bit too weak. So if you plan on buying this lens, I advise you to buy a tripod or a gorilla pod that can hold up to 5 kilograms or more. And the same goes for gimbals. I was actually thinking about a DJI Ronin RSC2 because it could support a payload of 3 kilograms, I think. But because this lens is so front heavy, I think the safest bet would be to go with a DJI Ronin RS2, which can actually handle a payload of 5 kilograms. And keeping in mind that you have to make these kind of decisions with this lens, you also gotta think about that this comes at an extra cost with all these kind of things. Another con of this lens is the thread size. So the lens has a thread size of 95 millimeters and this is huge. So if you've ever bought any filters in the past for your lenses, you probably won't be able to use them anymore for this lens. So this means that you also have to buy some new filters for this lens only. And there aren't really a lot of manufacturers that produce 95mm thread filters. But I actually found two pretty good ones. So the circular polarizer that I got was one from Nisi, if that's how you pronounce it correctly. And the variable ND that I got was from Freewell. And I really like this company because the filter comes with a magnetic holder like this. So that's really awesome. And something else is that they include a really dope hard case with the filter. There is space for four or five other filters with a millimeter thread size that go up to 95 millimeters of course. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd actually like to get some more info on these filters or if you'd like to see a review on them. Because the Freewell one is really amazing. I mean, they're half the price of the Polar Pro or Peter McKinnon filters, and I think that the quality is the same. And they're as great as the Polar Pro filters. So the last con of this lens is the price, obviously. It's pretty hefty, 3000 euros, and if you add up the extra costs you have to make, such as buying more expensive gimbals, more expensive tripods, some new filters for the lens, it can add up quite a bit to the total cost of the lens. But to be honest with you, I think it's all worth it. So to answer the question of the video, can this lens replace three 
or four prime lenses? And the answer is yes. Should you buy it? Yes. Even if it comes down to selling your kidney, your girlfriend or something else? Yeah. For me personally, this lens is really an all-in-one package. And yeah, it's a bit expensive, but if you consider what you get for this price, it's a bit relative and worth the investment. So I really hope I helped you creators with a decision on whether or not to buy this lens. So consider liking the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to see more content like this in future. Creators, that is it again for me today. Come out. Peace!